I want to ask you about the X-29 because that's just, again, I had a picture of it on my wall and uh, it just seemed crazy, but I guess, what, what, I don't know, tell me what you can about why and how and Well, the X-29, like. we had, there were two demonstrators built. Okay. And there were, uh, X-31, there were two demonstrators built. So the X-29, um, Grumman and Long Island, they flew the first four flights uh, and the last two of which were, I think, at Edwards. And there are lots of, then we took over as for the Earth, for DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, does all the way out stuff for the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. And they, they have agents, and in this case, NASA was an agent, and they took on the flight safety responsibility on behalf of DARPA and ran that. So we started flying the airplane. So lots of amusing stories here. I just digress in one. The chief test pilot was flying it. Now, the business about controlling your ego, there are a lot of cases where chief test pilots never figured that out. And um, likely that was the case here. But so he, I was a chase uh, in a 104. You know? So I'm, we chased all the, the data flight, all the test flights. So I knew he was finishing his tests. So I wanted to get out of there because I didn't want to be on the runway when he was coming in or have him delay. So I leave and when the other the other chase is coming. So I get out of there and I'm I land and I'm I park the airplane and I'm walking in and there's an Air Force colonel that is walking towards me and greets me and uh he says, Did you see the roll? And I said, The what? I no, I didn't see anything. Why what happened was that the pilot, the test pilot, whose name I won't repeat now, but he was in, he did a f really a flawless, very efficient test points. And he finished those, and you can imagine there, this is third airplane of this, third flight of this very unusual airplane. So the control room has is, is got 20 people in it that are all looking at screens and whatnot, and he does a roll. He doesn't say any, he doesn't Just say a word. An aileron roll. An aileron roll. Okay. Well, that's not a, that's not been cleared. Mm -hmm. This is not in the envelope, but you can imagine what the heart failure in the control room. They think there's some uncommanded right. something is broken, and there goes a roll. Right. And so uh, that's what what he did, and he was removed from the program by the Air Force. Wow. Yeah. And then the number two guy, who was a close friend of mine, took over, and he flew the flew with us for the next couple of years. But uh, it, it had a lot of technologies in it. It just didn't, it had an aeroelastically tailored wing. I mean, the Germans built a forward swept wing in the Second World War. Uh, but you had to, you can imagine, and I'm holding my hands up on purpose, mm -hmm. that as you increase angle of attack, the angle of the flow to the airplane and therefore the lift, what's gonna happen to the wings? They're gonna bend and what's happening to the angle of attack locally. It's getting bigger, so it's gonna bend more. So it's di there's a point you will reach uh, where it's divergent. Well, you have to make, you have to put a lot of extra strength in the, in the structure. So that, that offset some advantages and so on. Okay. So they could aeroelastically tailor the wing that it was built and they could make, make the, 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 the um, curvature of the wing such that they could delay that wow. that divergence. So that had never been done. Oh. So first of all, it was an aeroelastic. It was a co composite wing. Uh, lots of structural or um, manufacturing problems that hadn't been solved. Because oh. um, this was brand new. You have to always translate your back. Yeah. And um, then it had um, a canard that was, it was, well, most importantly, it was statically unstable. If, if the airplane didn't have the flight control system, st which was four channels, or three and three digital and one analog, four channels, redundancy, uh, that airplane would, at 250 knots, would likely break in half. Yikes. Because it's, it, it's 0 0.12 seconds to double amplitude. It would double its amplitude, that's how divergent it was, oh. every 0 0.12 seconds. Wow. So that was really unusual. Yeah. Um, and then it, it had um, uh, a canard in front that was in a 
a different position and so on. So there are about four or five te technologies that were new in that airplane. Hmm. So it was m my opportunity to be involved with a brand new airplane. This was like, there were four flights before we got involved in it. And then we were doing systematic checking and uh, increasing the speed. Um, and they invented in the control room, uh, they had all the information. Uh, we could do a frequency sweep in the airplane. That's moving the stick maybe plus or minus an inch, let's say, mm -hmm. at really low, slow, and then faster and faster and faster and faster. That gives a, a variety of frequencies. In one minute, the control room had the answer of what the margins in the closed loop of that system, what margins remained. We were allowed to operate at half the margins that an operational aircraft would. But we could see as we got up near transonic speeds, the, the slope was going to go down to zero. Well, we could see it before, got it, before you got it. So there. we stopped and they made some changes in the control system. They had invented that system because before they flew the airplane, they had some data from beams, buckling beams, not airplanes. So there were a lot of technologies that had to be approached systematically and carefully. And um, then at the end game, you asked uh, before as we were talking, say, well, why weren't there more airplanes built like that? Because it, it, it reduced the maneuvering drag that you have a consequence of getting lift as you have angle of attack, mm -hmm. uh, as you increase it, um, you have corresponding increases in drag. So as you maneuver, as you turn, you're increasing the, the lift, you also increase the drag. So the idea was that forward swept wing uh, at the higher speeds uh, would be advantageous in minimizing, not eliminating, but minimizing sure. that drag. And I think it largely did that. But we do the same things now with leading edge, that are leading edge um, flap, leading flaps, mm -hmm. trailing flaps that are controlled by a computer that is putting, therefore, the the camber of the wing um, in the proper camber so that we can get the minimum minimum drag. So it, you can do it other ways. Yeah. yeah. Was the X-29, though, intended to just study that phenomena of yes. forward swept? So they never thought, we're going to build four, and then maybe we'll build 400 no. later? Okay. It, it was a technology demonstrator. Gotcha. As was the X-31. Okay. 